Howdy folks, TJ here. Happy Friday to you. It's the first week of June 2020. Just come off my birthday weekend this last week. I know I look about 80 right now. I haven't shaved or trimmed or anything since the whole COVID-19. I think the last time I was kind of bald and trimmed was um, February, middle of, for a trade show I did. And I kind of said to myself, I'm not going to trim or cut this off until I can go to a professional barber again. So I may look a lot more like Chris Kringle right now than normal. But I wanted to do a video about rabbit holes. No, those aren't donuts like rabbits. Donut hole, rabbit. I guess I, today's National Donut Day, I think. Maybe that's why I'm talking about freaking donuts. I don't know. Laser discs. That's what this video is going to ultimately be about. But the first part of it's going to all be about a new rabbit hole. I've been in some. Believe it or not, you can get out of rabbit holes. I just haven't figured out how to not add new rabbit holes into the equation. And this rabbit hole that I'm about to embark on, well, I've actually been embarked on it for three weeks now. It's more than a rabbit hole. I've got a earth core ship about three quarters of the way to the core of the earth on this sucker. So I don't think I'm going to be able to get out. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I've already had a blast with it, my wife and I. But we're going to chat about rabbit holes a little bit. But I want to paint a picture. So this video is not going to be about an unboxing of this. But ultimately I'm going to flip back to it. Talk about what I just have been purchasing. How it kind of led up to it. Because if you've been watching my videos, you know I'm into older stuff. 8-bit computers, Sinclair, Atari, all that fun stuff. And if you've watched some of my, my other videos, you know I have a lot of older stuff. Some antiques. Most of it's not just hang up on the wall antiques for pretty. It's actually useful. I've got an old phone over there that I'll show a little bit later that actually still works. It's been retro fixed up, I guess. No, not retro, but it's been modified to where it can actually connect to the to the phone service, but it's a real old phone. And I've got an old phonograph and all sorts of other things we're gonna chat about, but laser discs, that's what this whole video is gonna ultimately come back to, but I wanna paint a picture of my audio, visual, uh, watching movies, all that about how does my wife and I enjoy all that stuff, and, and that may be why we're getting one of these, or I've actually, I've already got it, what am I mean? I have four of them now, damn it! Anyway, let's take this off and we're going to chat a little bit about rabbit holes. All right. So, let's get some stuff on this table and chat about it. That was pretty neat magic, huh? <laughs> it's so dirty. <laughs> Ooh, that, that, yeah, that, that, that doesn't work around my house. I do like that. My wife slaps me. So, what the heck do I have on my table here? These are just a few things that I want to talk about. Audio! So, all of us kids started out with audio, right? Well, at least in my age bracket. I was born in the 60s. So, when I was first born, our entertainment, our audio was radio. I don't recall having a TV in the 60s. Maybe early 70s is when we... Mom and Dad purchased our first TV. Pretty sure it was black and white. I remember purple. So I'm either colorblind or it was a colored TV that only showed purple. <laughs> Pretty sure it was a black and white TV. One of those old, you know, big wooden things with a TV in the middle. And uh, talking about audio. So what did we start with? I remember around the same time we started doing cassettes and 8-tracks. Have you ever heard of the word play tape? We didn't have those, but I did later in life. They're like a little 8-track tape. Size of a Sinclair uh, micro drive about. Endless loop type of tape. Typically had two tracks on them. Those came out in the 60s. I kind of remember them a little bit, but never had owned any. <clears throat> until a few years back when I started getting in the Volkswagens. Volkswagens and plate tapes kind of have a little little uh, thing going on. But anyway, music, audio. Yeah, we started with something that kind of looked like this. So I remember, guys remember the company Sanyo? This is not a Sanyo. I wish I had my first tape player. 
I thought I kept it up in the attic and couldn't find it. So here's a modern tape player that us kids would have, you know, one that had a little handle on it. This is a modern one that I recently picked up for my computing needs. Uh, if you've been watching me, you know I own Sinclair computers and I still load cassettes. But back in the day, what kid didn't have a player like this and made mixtapes for whether it was your girlfriend or for yourself? Back then, I wasn't too good. I would uh, have the little mic up to, a, up to the speaker of the radio recording radio songs. I remember doing that. So audio tapes was probably the biggest thing that I used as a kid. And I've got all sorts of tape players now. This one, this is actually for a Sinclair computer, but also plays audio perfectly fine. And it's very similar to some other, uh, like Re uh, Radio Shack Realistic. They, uh, yeah, Realistic, I think was the name of it. They have this little Mini 9 one that's kind of like this little bookshelf or, I don't know, book type of um, player. And of course I had my Walkmans and all that, but this little one is quite fun for my computing needs. And look at this big ass beast. This is one that I also picked up and I have the little Sinclair computers I'll show you a little later. But this one is a huge stereophonic Califon tape player. And I use this for loading tapes on my Sinclair computer for playing games. But it sounds great for playing audio stuff. So uh, tapes, cassette tapes, that was big in my house. Eight tracks were also quite big. Mom and dad in the early 70s purchased one of the big old turntables. Big piece of furniture, had a turntable, radio, and an eight track in it. Us kids couldn't touch it. Only mom and dad could, but as time wore on, in the 70s, we got to start playing our records, typical 45s and 33 RPMs. That was quite fun. So I fondly remember 8-tracks and cassette tapes. Again, making your own mixtapes was quite a lot of fun. What the heck's this thing? This is real old. This is, you know, before my time. But since my wife and I enjoy older stuff, this is an old 77 RPM photograph. Big witch's hat on the top for the speaker. We have fun with it during the holidays, typically. I've got some Christmas music. And I don't know if any of you collect. We don't really collect, but we have some. Probably getting my head out of the video now. But these old, very thick, 77 RPM music. On crank, 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 crank. Dropper on, has a needle, plays music. A lot of fun. So audio is a big part of my life going way back. And so I wanted to show you a little bit about my audio. Why the heck do, or does TJ have one of these old phonograph players? Well, during the holidays, it's kind of fun. I don't collect tons of 77 RPM records, but it's kind of nice to have some specially holiday themed. And once in a while, we crank this up and play a few tunes. Quite fun. Cassettes I use today, my Sinclair computers. I've got music also, uh, mostly 70s and 80s, Boston, Def Leppard, that type of music that I like. So I use cassettes still. These are all a lot of fun, sound fun. So that's kind of a little bit of an audio grab from way back when, when I first started. Hey, yeah, audio is great. Got to play records, got to play radio and all that. And a lot of you guys in, in my age bracket, this all makes sense. So I wanted to show you a few audio fun things that are around my house. So why would TJ get a laser disc player? Well, maybe because he likes some of these older things. These are, well, this one for sure. This one I think is from the 80s. So this is in a similar age bracket as the laser discs. But it's pretty old technology for what most people use today. So there's some fun. Oh, let me show you this. What the heck is this thing? So this new modern cassette player has a little device that feeds out to eight different microphone, or not microphone, headphone ports. I thought it was kind of cool. So one of the things that I did since I'm a computer nerd for my old Sinclair computers, I loaded a game 
onto multiple different Sinclair computers at the same time. I called it a little Sinclair LAN party. I thought it was quite fun. Uh, so this little device feeds out the audio to eight individual different ports. All sorts of things I could do with that. But anyway, that's the audio. Now let's go ahead and uh, switch over to video and maybe some computer stuff. So let's see if the snap works again. No, I think that's only used for once. So I got to, or how did that do? do, do? <laughs> let's go to the next part, video computers. Okay. I don't think that really worked too well, but I love that one. <laughs> uh, was it I Dream of Jeannie that did that? I think so. She was hot. Okay, wife's not here, that's why I can say that. Uh, computers, videos, the more graphic side of as TJ and wifey progressed. Man, I've got a lot of dust on. That's one thing about black computers, they sure show a lot of dust. And we are bad at dusting. So, how did things go? Well, I remember the VHS first. We purchased a, D, a VHS player, my wife and I. We got married in 1990. So I think technically the first one we purchased together was 1990. But we were dating in the 80s. And I think we both had our own players then. So I was already pretty deep into VHS tapes. Uh, so my wife and I actually still do. We got rid of a lot of them. Uh, and I'm still fine that we did. Uh, we moved on the DVD, much more compact, makes a lot of sense. But there are some things that having a VHS player still makes a, a lot of sense for us. I've got some um, Volkswagen Bug Me videos that I still enjoy on VHS tape. But wasn't it so fun back in the day, your first VHS, you could record TV shows? We had the player that it had three knobs for each day of the week. And one was to start the timer for when the video started recording. The second one was the stop. And the third one was a little clicker that you had to stick a little like screwdriver in and put it on what channel you wanted to record. That's the oldest one that we have. Uh, and so VHS tapes, uh, that was our original form of uh, entertainment that we could do at our leisure and not just TV. Now, of course, like I said, we started with TV, I seem to remember as early 70s when we had our first color TV or purple one. Um, and uh, yeah, so started with TV, then advanced to using a TV, but with VHS tapes. This is my wife's, by the way, Camelot. Uh, and then as time progressed on, we moved uh, on the DVD. I still have quite a few DVDs. Wizard, great movie. So DVDs still run rampant in our house. We're not going to get rid of those. And Blu-rays, Little Miss Sunshine, great movie. So we've got tons of Blu-rays. And I'll admit, my wife is great at Amazon. Yeah, she buys tons of videos. She is the one that equips our home with tons of videos. So when we, at some point are shut in, and we've been shut in for a while with this virus thing going on, even though we're venturing out. But in the future, when we're even older and crustier and just want to watch a movie, we're going to have plenty to choose from on more modern DVD and Blu-ray, and who knows what will come out by them. So we advanced like everybody else in the world. VHS tape in the United States was popular, and then DVD became the norm for our house, and then Blu-ray. Uh, we never went past uh, Blu-ray at this point. We don't do any of the 4K stuff. We don't have a 4K player. As for players in the house, we have a dual DVD and VHS player. I'm guessing we purchased it in the 1990s at some point. And then I have one that's not working that I don't want to get rid of because it was a four-head VHS player recorder. And at the time, it seemed like a pretty high-tech one, and it stopped doing something. And I don't have the heart to to throw stuff away unless it's really a basket case or cats pissed all over it. And we'll talk about cat piss in a bit. Uh, so we have a second one that I wouldn't mind opening up at some point and just see if it's a simple belt thing or something. Uh, and so we still have a couple VHS players in the house. That's a way to get entertainment. So again, we're leading on to why did I get a laser disc player? But before we get to that, let's talk about 
computers because that's an audio visual experience in itself. I purchased my first Atari 800. I'm an Atari kid, uh, at least computer wise. 1980 is when I purchased it with my own paper route money. Cost me, I think, $1,100 for this and the cassette player that went with it. Later on in life, I've become a Sinclair nut. I'm in the United States. Sinclair was not popular in the United States, but I've fallen in love with it uh, now, what, a year and a half, getting close to two years now? And so I am a Sinclair nut. I love these Sinclair computers. So part of my visual audio experience is playing video games or trying to make my own video games. Look at this little thing. So this is the little uh, Timex TS-1000 that was actually sold in the USA with the Timex Sinclair name on it. And uh, I connect this to that big old Califon cassette player. People always crack up going, God, that thing's huge. But it's so fun loading. This thing is black and white, no sound, but it's a hoop to still play with. So that's part of my visual audio experience. And I could not leave out the new Spectrum Next. This is a modern rendition of the old Sinclairs. This just started shipping this year. It was a Kickstarter three years ago. They're now finally shipped. And this is a Sinclair Spectrum Next uh, that you'll see in some of my other videos. So, yeah, I love playing old video games. 8-bit is my thing. Before Atari 800, I had the Odyssey 2, and I should have grabbed that out of the other room. But we'll take the camera there in a little bit and show you my, my little um, corner of the world that's for the old video game. RCA TV setup that I have, and I also have a laser disc player on it, too. Um, so, yeah, I love this old stuff. But the Odyssey 2 technically was my first venture into a kind of a computer video game thing. Purchased it actually as a Christmas gift in 1976, I think, 77, when my parents purchased it for me. So that's when my computing world kind of came into the picture and video game world. So this is a little of the, the video stuff that I kind of uh, enjoyed. Of course, I've got CDs, uh, so I should have covered that in the uh, audio section, but we have tons of CDs still, and um, yeah, we, we're still a CD collector, and then, of course, we do downloads, too. So, yeah, why am I covering all this stuff? Because it's part of your whole visual audio experience, right? We all kind of came up through this. If you're in your uh, 40s, 50s, this is kind of probably how you started your way up. But in modern world, so how else do I get video stuff now. I live in the country. I live up in the mountains of California. Hello, I'm Mr. Dish. Does it, er, does it make my voice change? So we've went through many renditions of this. I've been in this current house for 20 years. Started with Dish, went to um, Direct, went back to Dish, left Dish, and went back to our antenna. We have an old antenna up on our house. The nearest towers are down in Sacramento, about 70 miles away. We have a brand new, pretty brand new antenna I had put up there because our old one, I thought, you know, it, our stations kind of came and went. You'd be right in the middle of something great and they're about to stab somebody or kiss someone or whatever and it would go out. Trying to pick up up in the mountains, hilly valley, all this stuff, towers 70 some odd miles that direction meant coverage would come and go. So we went back to Dish. But uh, we've got a, a very powerful antenna up on the top of the house. And um, maybe our next step is to get a rotary thing that we can dial it in when the airwaves change and we can try to pick up the station again. But we kind of got, screw that. You know, you're watching Sven Gulli on a uh, Saturday night and right when the good stuff happens, it would cut out. So we went back to dish. Internet. Yeah, that's another way to get your entertainment. No, I'm not talking about porn and stuff. Nothing wrong with that. But videos on YouTube and all that fun stuff. I so wish I could stream all that stuff. I'm going to show you why I can't. Hughes Network! I'm on satellite internet. It's like two tin cans with a string in between. So when I upload videos to YouTube, it takes all day and all night and maybe gets there the next day. Shoes, that's our internet. So I live up in the mountains, like I said. No DSL here. No cable. Cell service doesn't come in because we're too remote. 
Barely it comes in just to make calls. So yeah, I can't really enjoy all the streaming stuff that you guys do. On a good day, we can try to get a Netflix in at SD quality, buffering, and again, you'll be right in a good part of something and it stops buffering. It's a pain in the ass. So one day when I get real internet, that will be part of my audiovisual experience. Now it's a lot of buffering and a pain in the ass. So we like to have things local here where I can plug it in or turn it on and it worked. So that leads to LaserDisc. We're finally there. You're probably saying, TJ, stop talking. Let's talk about LaserDisc. So let's get this stuff off the table and talk a little bit about LaserDisc. So let's see. Yeah, it's not going to work. <laughs> ah, silly. Okay, let's go LaserDisc. Okay, we're finally to laser discs. <laughs> this is going to be one long ass video. Hopefully uh, you enjoy it. If you don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you can already stop if you don't want to watch all this stuff. So what happened? So I've been actually, uh, this is my first one. We're not doing an unboxing like I said. But we're, I've got a couple players up on the tables uh, so we can chat about things. So for a little while now I've been looking out for laser discs. As you see, I like a lot of older stuff, older technology. Sometimes it can be more fun using it versus new age stuff. I much prefer playing an 8-bit computer than a modern computer. Easy peasy for me. So, laser discs. So I've been, like I said, kind of looking at them for a while. I have a buddy. Hi, Mike. I won't say his last name because I don't know if he wants to be associated with me. <laughs> I'll just call him Mike. He's a big laser disc aficionado, I guess is the proper word for it. He's been collecting f since like the 80s. He has tons of them. And he kind of was the parent. We're on IRC all day. I still IRC, by the way. Yeah, that's kind of pre Facebook, pre all that stuff. Uh, not quite. Well, I guess it could be considered bulletin board age. I mean, IRC has been all around a long time, but yeah, uh, IRC's fun. Well, I'm getting an echo. Hello? Must be that thing. I'm going to move that out of the room. I'm hearing like this parabolic, that's probably not the right word, probably some engineer's going, that shithead, he don't know shit. It's not parabolic. Although it probably is. I don't know. But it sounded weird. Getting a weird echo. Hello? Okay, I think it's gone now. <laughs> um, laser disc. So he was kind of like the parent one day on IRC because I had asked a question about it. Because he was talking about laser discs, and he says, TJ, do as I say, not as I do. Every parent tells their kid that, right? And what does every kid do? They disregard their parents and do what they don't supposed to do. <laughs> so I had first told him, yeah, I don't have the money to do this stuff. Then all of a sudden, I sold some stuff, and I decided to buy one. Not in spite of his good words, uh, but I, I did it, and now I'm in a deep-ass rabbit hole. So three weeks ago, I think today, I purchased this nice Pioneer. I've got all sorts of stuff on me. CLD D701. Pretty nice player. It's i I, I got to look at the tag again, but I think it's early 1990s. It's got a digital out port on it, which is nice. Uh, not the uh, the high-tech Dolby AC3 and all these other things. I have a lot to learn about laser discs, but it's not strictly analog like this one here. Like this one over here, it's got a, a digital uh, analog and optical port, which is kind of cool. It gives you a little bit more capability. So I purchased that on eBay, and the reason I purchased it on eBay is it was a semi-local. I could drive three hours that direction and three hours back. So it was almost about a six hour round trip to pick it up. But I've read horror stories from Mike and from other people. When you order stuff, these things on eBay or online, they typically don't arrive working or busted up or whatever. So a lot of people said if you can pick one up, that's the best way to go. So I purchased that one and I paid a good sum for it. It came with 17 movies and it came with the box, the manual, the remote, in fairly mint condition, not scratched up, clean, and it was, I think I paid 350 bucks for it. I felt it was a fair price for a known good working pickup player. 
Then all of a sudden, you know, I kept watching Craigslist and I kept watching the marketplace on Facebook. You know, I, I purchased one. Now I should just, I got one, I should just start buying movies periodically. Then about a week exactly to the day later, a local deal popped up. And that's players not on the table, by the way. 80 laser discs, a working player, doesn't have digital, it was an older player, 1980s, uh, within about a three hour round trip distance, purchased that. So exactly one week later on a Saturday, my wife and I drove down with our masks on because it's COVID-19 stuff going on and purchased 80 laser discs. And man, the boxes are heavy. <coughs> uh, and a, another player, I thought, hey, having another player is a good idea, even though it's only analog, that's fine. I purchased it for $100. I thought, pretty good deal. 80 laser discs and a player, 100 bucks, steal. So I purchased that. Okay, we're done buying. Now we're just going to buy little movies that my wife and I can do. This is kind of a fun thing for my wife and I. She collects a lot of stuff. I have my computer stuff. There's only certain things we kind of do together that we enjoy, like camping and things. But we really don't collect anything together. So I all of a sudden would say, you know, maybe there's something that we should do together in terms of collecting. And we both like movies. And I said, hey, dear, yeah, you remember laser discs? And she goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe we should start getting some. And I think she's on board because she's got a whole bunch of bookmarked online now. So another week goes by, and this is, was this last Saturday. Another deal popped up. And this deal was way too expensive originally. I'd seen it advertised now for a little while. I think she wanted $900 for over 700 laser discs. She said she stopped counting at 730 something. And two working players. Way, way out of my price. Too expensive. And then last week I saw it was cut in half, or more than half, down to $400 with a note under it saying price negotiable. And I kind of remarked to my wife, I said, you know, we could quickly build our collection up um, and maybe I could make a semi-close offer to that 400 and she may take it. And I'll let another couple do days go on and I figured if somebody else collected it up, it wasn't meant to be. I didn't want to go way out of my way just to, you know, build a collection really quick. So I think Friday came and I messaged her for the hell of it because I had a moment on my hand and I said, okay, I see that you're taking, you know, ne uh, negotiable price. How about $325 and I'll pick it all up Sunday? And she said, if you can make sure to get here Sunday, deal. And I said, okay, how about we move it up a day and we'll pick it up tomorrow, Saturday. She agreed to it. And so now I own, to, all together with everything, I think over getting near 900 laser discs now because this collection came with seven something and I already had a hundred something and two players. It's not perfect. Cats were in this house, and I talked about cat piss earlier. So this player, the nicer one, has vents on top. I get a whiff of musty, we own cats, and we know they're not too nice in some situations. They get pissed at you, pee on stuff. So I'm pretty sure this one's been peed on. I haven't tested either of these, by the way. The lady said she was playing the movie's on one of them. I'm guessing it's this cleaner one. The vents are not on top. It's on the side. And therefore, if a cat did pee on it, it's only an aroma. It's not getting inside. I looked inside quickly, and the PC board over here looks fine. This one does not. It looks like there's some stuff on there. So before I even turn this one on, I think I'm going to pop the case open. I'm going to have to Google and see if you can actually get a toothbrush and some stuff that you can kind of clean up a little bit and then just test and see if it works and does it make sense afterwards to tinker more with it. So I now have four players and a lot of uh, laser discs. Again, the negative part is they had cats. So, so uh, at least two of the boxes I know of, I started looking at the laser discs and I have a whole bunch of Star Trek ones. Some of them are stuck together. And... It's tried running my hand down through it and here it go. Some of the paper stuff's coming off. So I'm going to lose some, unfortunately, laser discs in terms of the nice cases. But the laser discs in them seem fine. But so out of it, we're going to lose some of them. But for $325, for almost 800 laser discs, and some box ones, look at this one. It's not a perfect box, but it's in pretty dang good condition. I love Sinbad. Am I in there? Yep. So, nice box set, 
So for those that not, are not familiar with laser discs, uh, they are like a huge ass DVD. If you're in the laser discs, you know what they are. Big ass DVDs. But what's cool about it is it comes in like an old record LP. It comes with lots of stuff to read, pretty pictures, and stuff to read on the front and back. That makes it more fun to watch a movie. So in the three weeks I've owned a player and a laser disc, each weekend we've had movie night, and I have played a laser disc. First one was Star Wars. Second one was um, an Indiana Jones one. And if you're on the on the group that laser disc forever, I think I called it Indiana Jones. Whatever the hell the name of the first one was, but I set it all out, and, the, and there were some people going, "No, you don't use the name Indiana Jones in there." Every group has that person or people. I don't give a shit about that stuff. Yeah, I'm not PC. I'm gonna do things and not watch it in the right perspective and all that. I try to watch it in the, in the right perspective now when I can. But if my wife wants to flick to an elongated one, so be it. Got it? All right, those are the only time I kind of make remarks. There's some people that just try to make mountains out of a molehill. It's a movie. Enjoy it the freaking way you want. I just spit. So some people may not like that. I'm saying that stuff here. I'm new to the laser disc uh, group. But it's fun. A lot of fun. My wife and I enjoy watching these type of movies. It's a little below DVD quality for those that haven't watched it, but it's above VHS quality. I've got this the this original or the lady that sold it to me. She was actually keeping track of the names of all the the uh, DV, uh, DVDs, laser discs. How cool! So I've got some pee cleanup to do, but very quickly I went from zero to nine hundred, and we'll call it that instead of zero to sixty, zero to nine hundred in a three week time span. I think that's pretty damn good. So my buddy Mike said I've been collecting since the. 80s and I'm up to like 11 something and I, I'm not caught up and I'm not going to try to catch up but that's kind of funny. <laughs> I think I did pretty good so everything collected together you kind of heard me talk prices earlier 350 with tax, uh, 100 for the next one and 325 for this. I'm well under a thousand dollars and I now have four players uh, getting near 900 laser discs some that may be expendable that I have to uh, clean up or throw away or whatever, uh, or clean up the case at least, keep the laser disc. Uh, but yeah, so fun. Laser discs are going to become a part of my... I'll do videos on it, not tons all the time, like my 8-bit uh, computer stuff. But it's going to be fun watching a movie, and maybe I'll do periodic posts on my laser discs endeavors, collecting some of them, and my excitement... Uh, with it. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video uh, and some of my silliness behind it. And uh, yes, I I do prefer to watch proper, I think they use the letters AR, you know, for the right video. You do, if, it's, if it's in the uh, scrunch down and all that, I try to watch the videos right. And that's normally the way I set it. But like I said, there's days that if you just want to zoom it out, zoom it out. I don't, I don't get into all those political stuff. Enjoy it the way you like it, not the way somebody else likes it. It's your life. Remember that. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed my little jump into this uh, laser disc video. It's a real long one. I do apologize. But hopefully you enjoyed some of the silliness and the carting in of the big ass uh, satellite dish used net and tin can string and all that stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching. I will do an unboxing video on the actual player I've got in my other room, which is our main Pioneer, and I've got a surround sound connected to it now. So I've been doing a little bit every week to kind of build up and make our home theater experience, which is just our living room, a more enjoyable one. So thanks for watching, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. See ya.